as a YouTuber, we get hit up all the time to showcase different products for them, usually in exchange for the product. I usually turn down all the video games and dumb things like that that have nothing to do with HVAC, but one thing that we do need in HVAC is a battery jump start or something to pump up our tires. Yeah, we have nitrogen, stuff like that on the truck, but it would come in handy if you had one built into one package. So the people at JF.EGWO Versatile Jump Starters asked me to review one of their products. So we got it in the mail and I went ahead and charged it up. It comes in this little black sack. I'm not exactly sure what JF.EGWO stands for, but it's their name either way. So it looks like a decent package. I said, guys, I will review it if it's good. I said, if it's not, I'll exploit it and make sure you guys are embarrassed online. So let's take a look and see whether or not this thing is worth a squat. So let's take a peek here. This is one of their small ones. This is only 2,000 amp. They got one that does 6,000 amps. They've got their jumper cables here that actually plug into it. It comes with a plug here. You can plug into a 120 volt outlet. Excuse my voice. I had a sinus infection, whatever. And here is a plug for a cigarette plug adapter so you can charge it on the fly. They do come with an extension cord here for the hose so you can pump, uh, pump up tires at a further distance. So you've got that one right there. And it looks like you can go ahead and screw that onto there. Now it does have some lights on the side of it here. So you know it never happens when it's a date. So when you turn it on here on the side, you hit the power button, it gives you a readout. It does only do it in 25% increments. So 25, 50, 75, and 100. It's got out here on the side. It'll also say in when it's in charging. We have a five volt one amp and a five volt 2.1 amp. And if you hold the button until the light comes on, it gives you a flashlight, which it's pretty bright. It uh, literally is enough for you to see what's going on, be able to get whatever it is you need to get done and, and, and finished. It does have lithium ion batteries in it. Like I said, it does have a uh, pump. We're gonna test it, make sure it can pump up a van size tire. And we're gonna see whether it can start the van while it's dead. But instead of running my battery down, I'm gonna do something which you probably are not gonna recommend, but I'm gonna unhook the battery. So to get these things up and going, we pull this little rubber flap up. You can only do it one way, so this is pretty much foolproof. It's got a flat edge on the side there. So now let's see whether or not these are live. We got the fluke set on DC voltage. We've went ahead and clamped both uh, probes into the clamps. We're gonna go ahead and make sure this thing's turned on again because it shut off. You've got the 100% mark there. It should be ready to go. Now, it is reading zero volts. It needs a voltage to get it actuated. I'm assuming that they have a relay of some sort in there that is going to make it so this thing will not power up until there's 12 volts there. That way it can protect you against a reverse polarity, negative and positive switched around backwards. So it's gonna to need to see some sort of at voltage there. My work van is a Nissan 2500 NV. It's a five point something. So I'm not gonna destroy my battery by running it down, but I will tell you, I have a power inverter in this thing. That's what my power block here is. There's times I leave it on over the weekend and it can be dead when I come back out in the morning or close to dead, it won't start. You just need to get this thing running again so you can get to work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unhook the negative here. We're gonna hook the battery jumper cables right to it. And then we're gonna trick it um, with 12 volts from the current battery so that it thinks it's got 12 volts. What we're gonna do is see how many amps it actually takes to start this truck. We have DC inrush capability on the 376 here. We'll go ahead and put it on DC amperage. We're gonna do inrush when we do it. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clamp onto the negative. It, you know, one way or the other, it's gonna get it coming or it's gonna get it going. All right, so right now we're at 1.5 amps. That's what the light's being on, stuff like that. We're gonna go ahead and hit inrush. Let's go ahead and start it. Go ahead and turn it on. There we go. Turn it off. 26 amps. That's not a whole hell of a lot. Now, maybe you will say, well, you shouldn't have clamped it on the, the negative. Okay, well. Either way, it should have pulled, I would have figured probably 80 amps. I know a generator pulls sometimes as much as 80 amps. It's got to come through both legs. I mean, you got to, whatever goes through pause, it's got to come through negative. So if that's the case, this thing should start up really easy. All right, we're bit in pretty good <clears throat> on both sides of the clamp there. These clamps do have wires on the inside there to join both sets of copper contacts. Now, like I said, if we hook this up to the negative here, it's not going to do anything because it has no negative power to trigger this thing. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now, I am wrong. Okay, so we are clamped right there to that. My lights are on in my van, so it does have power. Let's go ahead and put it on there and put it on inrush. Let's see if this thing will start it. If it does, heck yeah, get it. The lights definitely are bright, I'll tell you that much. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh, 
only pulled 31 amps. I don't know how the heck it did it, but it did it. That's amazing. We are not hooked up to the negative at all. These engines, either they got more efficient or something, but holy crap. Well, never in a million years would have figured it would have been able to do that. Honestly, I was hoping, I was kind of expecting it to fall flat on its face. It did that no problem at all. Chopping a razor, jumping your lawnmower, whatever the case, you're going to be able to do it. Pump it up. I mean, this thing can fit on your motorcycle, you name it. As far as battery life, we're still at 100% right there. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. Honestly, I'm impressed. I do not, I don't know about that being truly the 30 some amps. I mean, we could try it again on the positive. Now we could do in rush or we could just do max. Why don't we do just max? Okay, got it on max. I don't know if in rush will work with DC, but we'll go ahead and set it at that. Here we go. No problem at all. Yeah, see, it only got 2.9 that time, just not fast enough. Have it back on the amperage. Let's go for inrush. Won't show anything until we start it. I don't know how it's doing it, because normally this thing doesn't like it. There's four starts right there. Yeah, I don't think it does the AC, or the, <clears throat> I don't think it does the uh, inrush quite as well on AC, uh, on DC. After five starts, we're at 75%. She's not hot. I mean, we're doing pretty okay. If you notice, the cords are purposely built so that they do not clang into each other. So they've made one a little shorter than the other. I just don't 100% believe it did that. So we're going to do it on the lawnmower here. I know this is a 25 horse uh, Kawasaki. I have not choked it, have not ran it. It's perfectly cold. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Go ahead and place this down close enough that we can reach it. I've unhooked the ground wire right here. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the positive just like I did on the truck battery. And we've got it clamped on there. I don't know if that's the greatest connection in the world. I mean, that's not the, I don't know. You got a couple little teeth on there. Let's see what happens here. So we'll go ahead and give it a little gas. Go ahead and choke it all the way. Holy crap, that starts better than the other battery. This thing never starts like that. Holy crap. Guys, I am impressed. I thought it was going to be a piece of junk. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was going to be garbage. I mean, the name just is weird. I don't know. I have no clue what it stands for. No offense to the company. It's just a weird name. But it actually works like they said it was supposed to do. So, like you've seen there, no trick photography here. It literally is not hooked up to anything else. That's 25 horse motor. The truck's a 5.9 liter V8. If it can start a big truck like that or a lawnmower, it's surely gonna start a Honda or some little dinky car or truck or something like that. All right, so we're back to the truck here. Let's go ahead and undo it. Now, this is a pretty good sized tire. They do recommend that you don't run it any more than 10 minutes. As you can see, that's not gonna reach. So we have to put that adapter back on there again. Once you got them back together, go ahead and hook on your piece there. That does come with a couple different attachments. Like I said, forgive my voice. I uh, was working out in the cold this week. Now it's warm. It's typical Ohio weather. Okay. <clears throat> right now we have about 70 pounds of pressure on there. So you can get some jump packs from them that do not have an air compressor in it. So if you just wanted the battery pack only, they do have one of those. The link in the description will be down below. So if you guys want to get it, you can pick it up on Amazon. This thing's going for currently here, August of 2022 for 99 bucks. Let's go ahead and drain this air out a little bit. Now for a normal tire, you're not going to have to go up to 75 pounds. Ran it down. You can see it's bulging out there. I didn't take it completely to zero. I don't know if it's really necessary. Right now we're at, looks like 40. There's 45 and 50. So we're at 40. We need to get it back up to 80. So that's 40 pounds. That's more pressure than what a normal tire is going to need. Most are usually 32, 34. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's go ahead and start the watch. All right, start the stopwatch. There we go at it. So we got that turned on. Turned on the power. Just out of curiosity to see how loud it is. About 80 dB at about four foot. 96. 55 pounds at five minutes. All right, so we're right at nine minutes. Wow, she's warm. She's definitely warm. Lasering it, we're 143, 150-ish. 160 in one spot. So we're right now at about 55, 60, 65. We're at 67 pounds. More than enough to get the truck down the road. 
Uh, they say right in their literature, don't run it more than 10 minutes. It's not made for truck tires like this. This is a little bigger than normal. It don't feel like it's that hot, but it definitely ain't cool. Ooh, you can tell the battery's probably a little warm on the backside. Yeah, well, there we hit 171 in some spot, 188. Yeah, we're starting to get a little, a little toasty in there. But that's where the uh, venting can go on. That's probably right there where the, mo the, the pump is. You know, I don't buy these for a freaking air compressor myself personally. I buy them for uh, jump start the engine. I need to get going. We can get it pumped up down the road. Be perfect for razor or something like that, off-roading. We went ahead and opened up the bag there. We do have these type of fittings inside there. So you've got a uh, basketball, football pump uh, adapter, something you can pump up a air mattress and another, I don't know what that exact brass one there is. It looks like something for a smaller threaded size for whatever. That does come in the box with it. Well, and it does come with a manual. Um, it's pretty well cooled down now. It's been a little bit while, for a while. Uh, that air compressor definitely is a pig uh, as far as eating power. Coming back at it, it's still a 50% battery life. It still works. Right on the little tag here, it says maximum tire size to inflate is a 255 tire aspect ratio any and wheel diameter not to exceed an R19, uh, R19 19 inch rim. As far as the back side here, the model number is a CS02. Those are the specs on it. You guys can pause it and look at it. Either way, it seems like a heck of a good unit. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the manual and wrap this up. Just plugged it back in. You can see right there that it says 25%, and you can tell that it is going on the in instead of out like it did earlier. So that's what it will read. When it hits 100% and it's still blinking in, that means it's not charged. It'll stop blinking when it's fully charged. So make sure you fully charge this thing when you get it. And then also you want to recharge it every so often. It's in the manual. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here's our simple manual we got. It's got spec sheet here, what it should came with. Looks like they got an instructional video for you to check out. And a few other miscellaneous things here. It's got SOS on the little light, a strobe, and then just full on tells you how to turn it on as far as the strobe tells you all the things not to do customer questions answers things like that so this should be enough to draw your interest into it if you guys are interested in picking one up i appreciate you guys taking the time to check out the video i thought it'd be something that people in the field would be interested in anybody that does camping or just, you know, drives a vehicle or need a, a jump starter and a air compressor. So anyhow, I think it's a worthy product. If you guys are interested in it, check out the description down below. I'll have a link to my Amazon account that will help support the channel. You'll still pay the same price. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.